Biggest surprise of the weekend Doing had well. to be Tampa Bay flying across the country and uh, and beating the Los Angeles Rams. They're in New Orleans this weekend. W- what did you make of Arians in that win? Well, I, I think when you look at Jameis Winston, I think you have to start there. Uh, he was spectacular. Yeah, he threw one pick, and you pretty much can count on him throwing a, a pick every week. But other than that play, he was sensational. Uh, Godwin, uh, Mike Evans, two wide receivers that you got to deal with. And, and I think New Orleans has some – familiarity with those guys. If you go back to the first game of last season, uh, Air ends, and, and more importantly, Byron Leftwich, who's the OC, the guy that's calling the plays. I, I think those two guys together have Jameis Winston improving. Now, is he playing at a Pro Bowl level yet? No, he's not there. But I think you can see improvement from Jameis Winston from the first game of the season until now. And if the kicker kicks a field goal, Tampa Bay's 3-1. and one. Uh, So I, I think it's a very formidable opponent coming down to New Orleans. What do you make of New Orleans winning for the first time since Peyton, for the first time since the late 90s, when they don't score a touchdown, they get a win. They win 12-10 over the hot Cowboys who came in on, uh, on, on Sunday night. Really good football team. You know, the, the sign of a team that can do things, not only during the regular season, but in the postseason, is can you win in multiple ways? I mean, like we all know Drew Brees, when he's healthy, Hall of Fame quarterback, you can win with him. We all know that Alvin Kamara and, and how he runs the football and he can make plays. Can you win with him? Like, we know that. They won with defense, guys, special teams and defense. Four field goals and a defense that says, you know what, I'm not going to allow Ezekiel Elliott to come in here. This big, bad offensive line of the Cowboys, hey, we're going to hit you in the mouth. And so I think you've got to give uh, Dennis Allen a lot of credit. You've got to give the special teams unit a lot of credit. It was a field position defensive game. And I, I think this is a notch in the Saints' belt because they'll put this win away. And they'll understand late in the year when they may have to go on the road or they get in a tough game, we don't have to outscore every team. This was the hottest team in football in the Cowboys, and they just shut them out. And so I think this bodes well, regardless of what their record will be in December. I think this bodes well for the mm. New Orleans Saints when they go against some of the better teams in the league. That's a, that's, a, that's a really interesting point. So like, even if the record isn't gaudy, that they have the ability to do this could be a, uh, a sign of, Upcoming playoff success. Talking to Booger McFraw and at ESPN Booger. Um, it, it is weird, though, Boog, because when you dive into the Saints' numbers, like they aren't particularly great at anything. They're 26th in total defense, 26th in total offense. Uh, I, I guess how do you explain a 3-1 and one record when statistically this is not a dominant team? T-Bob, stats are for losers. We go over mm. this every week. Okay, mm. We talk about stats. I don't care about stats. Watch the game. That game was won by the Saints' defense. I thought Marcus Davenport played as good as we've seen him yes. play so far. You know, you get Sheldon Rankins back. I, I, I thought maybe they'd hold him out another week or two, but he came back and played. So, statistically, I, I, I can make stats look, what, look exactly how I want them to look. Don't worry about the stats and the analytics and all that stuff. You tell me who won that game the other night. Like, yeah. That was defense and special teams. So, I, I understand people – uh, you know, look at numbers and try to create these theories. But you play football, T-Bob. Turn the tape on. And, and I think that's what you have to look at. It's about situational football. How many times did the Saints make a stop when they needed to? What about the turnovers? You know, the Ezekiel Elliott fumble. The punch of the football out of Jason Witten's arm. Yep. And so when you can make timely plays in situational football, again, Write this down, T-Bob, because I, I know you're a big guy as far as writing things down so you can read them later. Write this down. Okay, got my quote, pen out. Quote, and then you write the word stats, S-T-A-T-S, stats mm-hmm. are the number four, mm-hmm. and then losers, L-O-S-E-R-S. <laughs> quote, stats are for losers. Uh, okay, I got it right here. That? Stats are for closers. Uh, talking to Booger McFarlane. <laughs> Um, Boog, on the opposite side, okay, first off, actually, I would do want to ask you about Witten. Did you get to see him at all in the run-up to this game? Like, was it weird watching the guy that you're in the, calling the game, for, or I guess you didn't call the game, but watching the guy that you were in the booth with the year previous now out there back on Sunday Night Football? Yeah, it's weird. You know, I, I, you know anytime I turn the tape on and I'm watching the Redskins, and the Redskins go against the Cowboys, and I see him pop up, uh, he's a good football player, man. He may not be what he once was, but... I don't think any of us are. He's helping the Cowboys. He actually had a pretty good game against the Saints. I yeah, he did. He had 50 or 60 yards receiving, and, and he's helping them not only in the locker room but also on the field. 
I can't wait till we get Cowboys at Giants in New York <laughs> uh, to sit in a production meeting with him, to watch him on tape. Uh, he, he is a class act, man, and uh, he, he's definitely um, earned the right to go back on the field, and you can see it in this play. All right, let's get to some more other NFL questions. I'll try to say, uh, were you surprised to see Jerry Jones talking about Kellen Moore's hot seat? I mean, this guy was just like the greatest offensive mind in football two weeks ago. No, I, I wasn't. I mean, Jerry was answering the question, and he basically gave a diplomatic answer saying that, you know, when the offense doesn't go well, you know, we're going to talk about the O.C. And he gets it. Kellen gets it. Everybody gets it. And then he says, you know, we all got to improve. That's the stock answer. I'll tell you what was more surprising was to see Jerry Jones on Bourbon Street. Yeah. You know, really I mean, wanna, but what really other NFL owner that. could just swagger around middle of Bourbon Street the way that Jerry Jones did? Well, I, I, I think Jerry wants to be an owner of the people. Much like you want to be a host of the people, yeah. Jerry wants to be an owner of the people. And Jerry on Bourbon Street, and just kind of walking down and allowing himself to be filmed. Jerry had security, so Jerry could have shut the camera down at any moment, but Jerry wanted to be filmed. I like it. It's fun. You know, New Orleans is a tourist city, and I think that bodes well for the city. Anytime one of the most uh, wealthy people in, in the world, uh, and he can do anything in the world, yeah, he decides to go down Bourbon Street and have some fun. <laughs> That's a great point. I hadn't even considered that. You'll have Cleveland again on Monday night. You guys had them a couple of weeks back. They're now two and two, and they got a pre- that, that was a. It felt like a must win. I know there's not a lot of must wins in September in the NFL, but forty twenty five, they beat the Ravens, and now going to pack up and go face an undefeated team on Monday night with you guys in San Francisco. Um, d- do you feel like this Cleveland team is figuring it out with this talent, or are they still far off? Well, I, I think Cleveland is understanding. Patience is a virtue. You've you got to be patient. And, you know, we can talk about – and, and it's, it's very similar to LSU guys. Think about this. I'm going I'm to equate this. I know LSU didn't play. But we're enamored by Joe Burrow and the high-powered offense and all that good stuff. But remember I tell you this. Remember I said this. LSU's offense will ultimately be successful by their ability to run the football when they want to run it. Mm. Cleveland is the same way. Cleveland's turnaround – didn't happen by mistake. It happened because they lined up in two tight end formations and they ran Nick Chubb. So Odell and Jarvis and Baker, and we can talk about all their weapons, but their offensive line isn't good. And you tell me this, T-Bob, what makes an offensive line feel really good when you line up in two tight ends and you tell that guy, hey, you come off the ball. Run blocking is way easier than pass blocking. Exactly. You hit that guy in the mouth. And I think they ran the football. And guess what? When I hit you in the mouth so many times and then we go play action, now guess what? It's easier for T-Bob to block. And so I think Cleveland just had a kind of a, kind of a, a, a oh, moment, and they said, you know what, let's run the football, and then we can throw the football down the field. They doubled Odell Beckham pretty much all day. So who, who had a big day? Jarvis Landry. So yeah, it, to me, I, I think we make a referendum on what teams uh, are going to be and who they are too quickly. It was a good win. Now they have to go on the road a week after hearing all the success and pats on the back and everybody's cool and Odell is, is great and Jarvis is great. Now can they do it on the road at one of the more surprising undefeated teams in football? And I think that'll be key for us next Monday night. Okay, I got four rapid-fire ones here, Bug. Um, okay, shoot. You, you mentioned 49ers. Are they a fraud? The, the teams they have beat have a combined three wins. No, they are not a fraud. Okay. They are legit. Uh, Gardner Minshew or Daniel Jones? Um, Daniel Jones. Oh, okay. Wow. I would have gone with the Mississippi Mustache for himself. Uh, is Kirk Cousins any good? Uh, he's average. Okay. Golly, that's a compliment. Um, <laughs> uh, he did come out and basically apologize to Adam Thielen, too. After Adam Thielen called him out, he was like, he's one of the, uh, who will win the AFC South book? AFC South is going to be. It's all two and two. It's the most AFC South thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I'm going with Indianapolis. I believe wow. in Jacoby Brissett. I think when they get healthy, uh, Darius Leonard has been out a couple games. The defense has been shaky. I still believe in Frank Reich and what they're doing in, in Indianapolis. Have a great call Monday night. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. Appreciate it. Have a good one. T-Bob, remember that quote now. Stats are for losers, okay? Yeah, I agree, which is why I'm, you, I'm glad you didn't bring up Lamar Jackson's game because I agree. It just it doesn't matter. The numbers don't matter. And my guy's bouncing back next week. Don't worry yeah, exactly. about it. Exactly. I mean, just watch the tape. <laughs> have a great call, man. Later. Y'all have a good one, fellas. Later. There he is. Booger McFarland checking in for Monday Night Football. He will have the, uh, the 49ers and the Cleveland Browns.